Wolves were bottom of the Premier League at Christmas and headed for the Championship. Under Yula Lopetegui, they've risen out of the relegation zone and they're a much better team to watch. So we're going to have a look at what he's done tactically to improve them and where they might end up next season. So if Lopetegui is going to do something quite fruity with Wolves next season, he's going to have to keep them in the Premier League for starters. He certainly improved results and Bruno Lars they only scored three in their first nine games this season. Wolves do attack much better now with the, with the system that he's enlisted. So Lopetegui is much more tactically flexible than his predecessor Bruno Large. And one of the changes, key changes he has made is bringing the sign-in of Mario Lamina, who's very much been a pivot here to allow players like Ruben Neves to kick on. You'll often find Lamina in between the centre-halves to pick up possession, um, and he allows more creative players ahead of him to flourish. A perfect example of that was in their recent game against Fulham, when they scored what I'd imagine is sort of like an ar archetypal Lopetegui goal. So Jimenez picked the ball up in this area, played it back to Sarabia. Jimenez then made his run into the box while Sarabia played the ball out left to Mateus Nunes, another very quality player on the ball in these kind of areas. Um, Nunes played the ball into the box for Jimenez. He laid it off to Sarabia and then he scored from, from well, from just inside the box into the bottom corner. One of the issues Lopetegui actually has is selecting his best 11 and his best system. Um, like I said, here, here at Fulham, they sort of played a 4-2-2-2 or a 4-4-2. Um, I was at their game against Nottingham Forest at the weekend where it was actually uh, Matinho who played in the 10 here. Um, Adama Traore who played sort of wide right and then Nunes was sort of tucked in off the left. It was more of sort of a 4-2-3-1, um, but you could also go 4-3-3 with the, with the players that Wolves got, with Lamina as a pivot, Neves here, Nunes here, and then someone like Pedro Neto on the left there, or maybe even, uh, where is he, Daniel Penence, who's their top scorer this season with six goals. Then obviously you've got someone like Diego Costa who could come into the middle for crosses. Um, you've got options everywhere actually. Huang Hee Chan, Wolves have got a pretty incredible squad, like definitely definitely too good for the position they're in in the table. And yeah, it's, it's Lopetegui's job to work out what his best 11 is and his best system. But at the moment, that tactical flexibility is, is a bit of a strength for Wolves because they've become quite predictable under their predecessor, Bruno Large. So this graphic measures uh, Wolves' pressing intensity over a long period of time. So we're going back here to Nuno in the 2020-21 season, to Bruno Large last season, Steve Davis, who was temp temporarily in charge for a few games, and now Lopetegui. What we can really see in this, in this 10 game rolling average um, which specifically looks at passes per defensive action. So that's the amount the, of passes the opposition have before Wolves press and try and win the ball back. We can see here, it's, it's at its lowest ebb under Nuno in the pandemic season when Wolves were, were really kind of standoffish and very drab to watch. Lars tried to pick that up, tried to make Wolves more of an energetic team, but as you can see towards the end of his reign, that seriously dropped off. This is when Wolves were bottom of the table. They scored three goals in their first nine games this season. It's energy levels, um, it's making the team harder to play against, it's making them um, obviously more intense with and without the ball, and it's something that Lopetegui, as we can see here over this 10 game rolling average, has really improved in the last few weeks, and that's made Wolves a better team for it. One thing Lopetegui will want at Wolves is the ball. He'll want a lot of it. This is what he did at Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla blew Wolves away in a Europa League quarter final tie a couple of years ago uh, with a passing masterclass. Uh, Wolves tried to do maybe something similar against Nottingham Forest at the weekend, which didn't quite go to plan, but you know, he's still quite early in his reign, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, at Sevilla last season, when they finished fourth in the league under Lopetegui, they only conceded 30 goals, which was the best in the league, but they only scored 53, which is one of the lowest in the top half. So his teams tend to have a lot of the ball and he's now trying to figure out how he's going to generate goals from that. So as we can see here against Forest, they've created this kind of like horseshoe effect where there's lots of nice passes sort of in the, in the middle third of the pitch and a little bit in and around down wide areas. But when it comes to creating chances, scoring goals, he hasn't quite cracked that yet. In, in a similar vein, uh, in a victory against West Ham in January, this is kind of what he wants, I think, um, but just with more end products at the end of it and, and hopefully with better players to come in the future. You can see here, uh, in theory, Wolves' most attacking players in this game are Huang Hee Chan, who's a forward, and Mateus Cunha, who's a forward. But in terms of where they're receiving passes and where they're playing the ball on, they're actually deeper than Jean Moutinho, who's an aging mid-30s year old, uh, defensive or central midfielder. Um, but these are, the, these are the passing metrics that Lopetegui will want to enlist amongst these players. Um, it's just a matter of how they advance further forward, get the ball into the box and score some goals.
So it kind of goes without saying really, but Lopetegui needs to improve Wolves' goals for column and their goals against. And we can see here their non-expected goals tally for and against uh, over time, over the past couple of seasons. So 2021 under Nuno, Lars last season, Lopetegui this season. This is a 10 game rolling average. What we can see here is that Wolves' fortunes really start to turn under Nuno. This culminated in him getting the sack um, towards the end of 2021 when goals against is much higher than goals for in terms of XG. Lars made a massive dent in that and a massive improvement and Wolves were sort of riding high sixth or seventh um, under him last season before things did start to go wrong. They slid down the table. This bit here where Wolves' uh, expected goals against is massively higher than their expected goals for, they really had Jose Sarr to thank. He was their player of the season by a mile last season. Way, way overperformed his personal XG, made saves he shouldn't have made. That's what kept Wolves in a decent position and away from the relegation zone. This season, as we can see, the expected goals trend under Lopetegui is improving in both directions. So the amount of goals that they should be scoring from the chances they're creating is going up and the amount of goals that they should be conceding from the chances they're conceding is going down. If those trends continue, then Wolves will be much better off for it and you'll see them climb the table. And they should be climbing the table because their squad is worth an awful lot of money. They've actually spent more than 350 million euros on compiling their squad. Uh, they've broken the transfer record many times over. The likes of Mateus Nunes have come in for more than 40 million pounds. Wolf spent more than 100 million last summer. They went again in January after Lopetegui joined and signed another six players, including Cunha and Lamina and Pablo Sarabia from PSG. They're Premier League big hitters, really, when you compare the money they've spent to others. Obviously, the big six and Newcastle are the top spenders in the league, but Wolves aren't much further behind that. So all that money's gone on compiling what is a very, very good squad. And we can see here, you know, just, just how big it is and how much quality it's got in certain areas. I saw them in a recent game against Tottenham where Lopetegui used his bench brilliantly to win the game. He brought on Traore, Jimenez, Cunha, Matinho, and Nathan Collins, you know, a defender who had a really good season with Berlin last year. And that was what won them the game. You know, they had more bench options that, than a team and a club like Tottenham, which again, you know, says a lot for where Wolves should be. We can see here as we go through the squad just how many options he's got, particularly in the forward areas. You know, you look at the likes of Adama Traore, Pedro Neto, Daniel Pedence, Huang Hee Chan, Chiquinho, who's out for the season, Gonzalo Guedes, who came in for 27 million last summer and is now out on loan, Pablo Sarabia, who came from PSG, and then you're moving even further forward, you've got Diego Costa, Raul Jimenez, Mateus Cunha, Sasa Kalajic, who's out for the season injured, Fabio Silva, who's out scoring goals on loan for PSV this season. They've got an awful lot of options. Um, and again, given the money they spend, they should certainly be higher in the table. The numbers on this graphic denote how long a player has left on his contract. So we can see Ruben Neves plus one, that means he's out of contract next summer. Same with Daniel Pedence, same with Raul Jimenez. Uh, and the ones who are at contract this summer will be Matinho and Diego Costa and Semedo. That's why their names are in grey. So there's a little bit of work to do on it. Um, but certainly in terms of the forward areas and indeed at centre half, you know, Wolves have got a, a plethora of options really for Lopetegui to build on next season. So what has Lopetegui done to change Wolves? Well, recruitment was really good in January, which was very important. Wolves brought in six players who fit his style of football and most of them have improved the team. The underlying data, as we've seen, is good. XG on both fronts has improved. Uh, Wolves look like a better team. You know, they're, they're front foot, possession based, pretty attractive with narrow forwards, wide full backs and a real emphasis on defensive solidity. You know, these are the things that he's done in his career and it's a very illustrious career. You know, his, his previous jobs before Wolves were Spain under 21s, then he went to Porto, then to the Spain national team job, to Real Madrid, to Sevilla. You might ask what on earth he's doing at Wolverhampton Wanderers. You might also ask what on earth I'm doing here. We haven't answered either of those questions in today's video, but I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.